Hello, it's good to be with you today uh, as we study God's Word together. Uh, we're coming towards the home stretch of Psalm 119. Uh, but before we look at the Word of God, let's come to the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Father, we do pray, even as the psalmist prays, that you would hear us this day, uh, that you would give us understanding, that you would guide our steps. Lord, that we might not only hear and understand your word, but that we might put it into practice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I said, we come now to uh, the final section of Psalm 119. Uh, we've been working through this for quite some time, uh, but we come uh, to the first two verses today of the Tav section of Psalm 119. So we'll look at verses 169 and 170. So let me read them for us. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my plea come before you. Deliver me according to your word. And we see in these verses uh, a real a parallel statements. The idea that the psalmist is bringing his cry before the Lord, and he's also bringing his plea before the Lord. And he's, he's asking uh, for the Lord's hearing. He, he is uh, requesting permission to be heard. Uh, this is an appropriate thing, even as we know that through our Lord Jesus Christ, we have a boldness to approach the throne of grace. We ought also to always remember before whom we are coming. We are coming before the God of all the universe, the God who is almighty in power, the God who is most holy. And so as we come before him, we come humbly, as even as we would come uh, with a boldness, with um, no hesitancy, but coming uh, respectfully, honorably. Um, and so the psalmist does that here, and he, he, he's pleading for the Lord to hear. Uh, the first thing he says, let my cry come before you, O Lord. And this, this word, my cry, is, it's a loud cry. It's a, it's a calling out. You think of a child, the, the knee-jerk reaction of a child. Uh, to cry out to their parent when they're in need, to sense a problem, and, and to, to call for help, to call for help. And here we see the same thing uh, from the psalmist, and this should be our knee-jerk reaction as we are coming uh, to the word of the Lord, as we are coming to all our life situations. Our cry should be coming before the Lord, uh, even as we read the cries of God's people come before him day and night, and he is the Lord who doesn't slumber nor sleep. He's the one who listens at all times, and so our cry comes before him. And, and the cry here, this first cry, is an understanding. Give me understanding, or give me discernment. Help me to make my way. But notice, notice the tag at the end, according to your word. And we see this, according to your word, can be, can be read throughout this, this verse, the idea that the fact that my cry comes before the Lord is according to his word. How do I know that the Lord hears my cry? I know because he has promised me in his word that he will hear me. He has promised me especially because of the, the mediating work of my Lord Jesus Christ that he hears me. Because of the mediating work of the Holy Spirit indwelling me, he hears me. But also understanding that the understanding, the discernment is according to the word of the Lord. The way that we gain understanding is because the Lord gives it to us in his word. Do you want to understand things? Do you ever have times where you say, I just don't understand what's going on? Two answers. One, we cry out to the Lord. Help. Give me understanding. Give me patience in this as I'm seeking understanding. But two, we open the pages of scripture. We listen to the, the scriptures taught and proclaimed. Why? Because the Lord gives us understanding through his word. We're able to understand what's going on. We have footholds. We have foundations. We have surety as we hear the word of God, as we read it. Understanding, you know, sometimes when I get in situations in life where there's a struggle, there's a difficulty, and I say, what's going on? I say, I need a foundation at this time. I need a mooring. One of my favorite things to do is to, to look to the Psalms and just to read through the Psalms, being reminded about who my God is. Another place to go is, is that book of comfort in Isaiah, starting in Isaiah chapter 40, and, and reading the greatness of our God as he proclaims his sovereignty, as he proclaims his 
uh, unique standing as the God. I, I even I am he. I alone am God. That's a helpful thing sometimes when, when things seem out of control. But we really get that all through Scripture. According to the word of the Lord, we get understanding. And even this should be the prayer of our heart as we come to the Scriptures. Day by day as we read the Scriptures, Lord, give me understanding today. Understanding of your word, but understanding of the situations in light of your word. We don't read the word of God in light of situations. We read situations and circumstances in light of God's unchanging word. God tells us everything we need to know about our faith and about our practice. And we need to seek him out and we need to cry for his help. And like a good father, he is always willing to help his children to cry out to him in need. You know, it's it's an uncaring parent who hears their child in desperate need crying out for help, who says, I'm too busy, I'm, I'm going to do something else. You, you figure it out on your own. And even us, the best of us as parents are, are nothing compared to God the Father. How does Jesus say it? You being wicked, you still give good gifts to your children. How much more? How much more does your Heavenly Father give good gifts to his children? Give the Holy Spirit to his children? Will he answer this prayer for understanding? But secondly, there's the plea. Let my plea come before you. And if we think that crying out is a strong word, think about this word, plea. I am pleading. I'm pleading with you, God. How strong that is that, that we would plea, plead before God. And he says, let my plea come before you. He says, deliver me. Deliver me. When do we need deliverance? We need deliverance when we're in a predicament. When we're stuck. When we can't get out. When we think of that worst predicament, the, the predicament of our sin. We plead for the deliverance that only God can give. We think about so many circumstances when we get ourselves in predicaments. We say, God, help me. Help me out of this. I'm stuck. How does he deliver me? He delivers me according to his word. And once again, we understand the truth that he will deliver us, that our plea will be heard because of what we read in his word. Salvation belongs to the Lord. You will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He always lives to make intercession for his people. He pleads my case at the Father's right hand. What does 1 John 2 tell us? That when, when we do sin, we have an advocate at the Father's right hand. Pleading for us, the righteous one, Jesus Christ, our Lord. That if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We have the promise of deliverance, but also understanding that the deliverance and understanding what that deliverance is comes through the word of the Lord. It's according to his word. You know, the psalmist has spent already 168 verses before these two verses, 169 before this verse 170, declaring the excellencies of the word of the Lord. And where does he bring us back to in these two verses? To the word of the Lord. It's kind of like, have you not got the point yet? It's all about the word of the Lord and we need it. We desperately need it. And it's there. <laughs> the word gives it to us. Friends, don't pass up this treasure that you have. Today, spend some time, maybe just five, ten minutes reading the word. Don't miss the opportunity to gather with God's people to study the word. Don't miss the opportunity to gather with God's people to hear the word read and proclaimed. You need it. You need it for your understanding. You need it for your deliverance. You need it as that foundation that helps you to understand who your God is, who is in control at all times, and whom you are depending upon and whom I am depending upon. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you that you are the God who hears and answers prayer. We thank you that you have made a way for us to come into your presence by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
We praise you that he has risen from the dead, that he always lives to intercede for us through the power of an indestructible life. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit whom you pour out into our hearts, who also helps us to pray. So, Lord, won't you help us to pray? Help us to, to dig deep in the treasure mines of your word. Help us to know you better day by day. And as we know you better, help us as we live in this fallen world to live as you would call us to live, to live in total dependence upon you, to live in such a way as to bring you glory with our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I'll see you next week.